Hello and welcome to this new video tutorial of B2B Marketplace for the WooCommerce platform and in today's video tutorial we'll be uh, showing you a brief uh, overview of this particular plugin and uh, we'll be showing you the general configuration that are required for this particular B2B Marketplace for WooCommerce initially after you've uh, successfully installed this particular plugin and in the coming videos we'll be breaking down this uh, B2B Marketplace for WooCommerce into some sub parts and we'll be uh, explaining you each and every section that is there uh, to use within the B2B marketplace itself. So today we'll just go through an overview and we'll be basically uh, showing you the configuration settings and uh, the initial configuration settings that are required for this particular plugin. So before we proceed further, let me give you a small gist about this uh, particular plugin. So basically the uh, multi-window marketplace uh, B2B uh, plugin can convert your WooCommerce store into a B2B marketplace just like Alibaba, India Mart, Thomas Net or the EC21. So basically it uh, creates an online platform where the business buyers and the suppliers around the globe can connect and can do business transactions with each other. This particular plugin has a uh, various built-in features such as buying leads, request for quotations, quick order, contact the supplier, supplier reviews and much more so uh, we'll be uh, now taking you further and we'll be first showing you the initial general configuration overview uh, that is required for this particular b2b marketplace for woocommerce plugin so for that i'll be taking you to the admin backend panel first so here i'm at the admin backend panel right now for the uh, woocommerce marketplace b2b uh, plugin and I'll be entering my username and password to access my admin panel. So I've uh, successfully logged in right now, as you can see. So after the successful uh, uh, installation of this particular plugin, uh, you'll be able to see the uh, B2B Marketplace menu option on the left hand side panel, as you can see here. And under the B2B Marketplace, here we have different options uh, that can be configured. For example, we can set up the uh, suppliers, we can check the uh, commission, set the commission, uh, we can manage the feedbacks, attributes, notifications, uh, the codes that the customers have uh, sent in. Uh, we can also check the shop inquiry, configuration and extensions as well. So basically under extensions, we'll be able to check all of the extensions that are there for the uh, uh, WooCommerce platform. Uh, let me open that up in one other window here. So. Uh, Tapping the extensions uh, would basically bring up all the extensions uh, that the web pool has created for the uh, WooCommerce itself. So here you can see that we have all of the uh, our marketplace plugins here. We have the buyer sell chat plugin, we have the wallet pre-order plugin for WooCommerce. So from this section you can also uh, make purchases for the uh, modules uh, that are there uh, and uh, for which you have uh, some kind of a uh, requirement there. So basically under the B2B we have different options to configure it. Now after you've uh, successfully installed this particular plugin what we need to do is we need to go to the backend configuration for this particular module. So we can directly go from configuration section as well. So I'll just tap here under the B2B marketplace. I'll be tapping on the configurations uh, link here. And now uh, this brings up uh, a number of tabs as you can see here on the top. So uh, we have the general settings then we have the settings for the product. Uh, here we are having the product uh, configurations then we have the chat configuration and similarly we have the configurations for the uh, quick order then we have it for the uh, code system then we have the asset visibility as well and lastly we have the advanced settings as well so let's go through of each of them uh, each of these particular uh, configuration tabs one by one so uh, I'll just tap on the general first so basically here under the general uh, tab so uh, here the admin can set the minimum commission uh, by entering the same here and uh, so uh, the admin basically needs to enter a commission rate within this particular section and this commission mechanism would be applicable to all of the suppliers within the marketplace itself so for example if there's a supplier s1 and uh, his uh, product is p1 for example and the price for it is 100 us dollars so on a sale of the product one 
uh, the, the product P1. The supplier will get the 80 US dollars and the admin will get 20 US dollars as a commission. So uh, that was about the mini com minimum com commission that the admin can basically set up from this section. And uh, then we have the auto approval of the uh, suppliers. So uh, if this checkbox is checked, then the suppliers would be auto approved after uh, the registration uh, as a supplier. So for example, if the admin allows the option, then the users who will be signing up at the store as a supplier will be uh, converted into supplier automatically. Otherwise, uh, the admin can set the approval required first and after the uh, approval, only then can uh, that particular one become the supplier. Then uh, lastly, under the general, we have this supplier show separate form. So basically, if this uh, particular checkbox is uh, selected, then the supplier will get a separate login and registration form. So uh, that was about the uh, general uh, settings under the general tab. Thereafter, you can tap on the save uh, changes button. Then let's go to the product settings now. So here we have three different settings to configure. The very first one is allow supplier to publish. So basically, if this checkbox uh, has been checked uh, by the admin, then uh, the products added by the supplier would be auto approved. Otherwise, if you uncheck this particular option here, uh, then every time uh, the product will be moderated by the admin. So whenever the uh, supplier adds a product, the admin has to uh, moderate it if you have unchecked this. Otherwise, if you uh, check this option, then the supplier can directly basically add the uh, products and they'll be auto approved. Then we have the allowed product type. So basically within this section, you will be able to uh, set up uh, the product types uh, which the admin wants to allow for the suppliers. So accordingly, uh, according to your requirements, you can set up your uh, allowed product types here. So you just need to tap here and uh, you can choose uh, from the product types. Then we have the allowed categories and from here basically the admin can select the categories uh, which they want to allow for the uh, suppliers uh, there. And uh, after making these three settings, you just need to tap on the save changes button. Now let's go to the chat section and let's see what different options are there. So uh, here we have different options to configure. So the very first one is the host name. So here the admin would be able to enter the host name of their online store. Uh, so you need to set your host name here. After that, you need to set up your port number. So uh, the admin can basically enter any of the available ports uh, that are uh, available right now for the chat system itself. And uh, under the chat name, the admin can basically set up the name that would be visible to the customers at the web store front, front end uh, for the users. Then we have HTTPS enabled. Now uh, the admin can choose it as a yes or a no. So enable this option to use the chat system on a live server. Otherwise, you can tap the uh, no button to work it on the uh, testing uh, server itself. Now, after that, we have the upload uh, server private key file. So basically from here, the uh, admin needs to upload the server private key uh, provided by the service, uh, a server service provider. Also kindly note that some of the uh, shared hostings where you are, uh, you have uploaded your uh, web store, basically the files for your web store, uh, they don't allow to have this. So you need to just check with them uh, whether they are providing the uh, upload server private key or not. Then we have uh, the upload server certificate key. So here the admin just needs to upload the server certificate key provided by the server server ser service provider itself. And lastly, we have the upload uh, server CA bundle file. So here the admin can upload the CA bundle provided by the server service provider itself. And after we have set up these options here, you just need to tap on the save changes button. So that was about the chat section within the B2B marketplace uh, configurations. Now let's go to the quick uh, order section. So uh, one more thing is uh, there uh, within the chat system that uh, the admin basically needs to run the uh, runs and commands within the plugin root directory. And that would basically install all of the dependencies which are required to use the chat system itself. So uh, you can get the uh, information for that uh, within the user guide that I have just attached within the comment section below. So you can check that user guide uh, to know more about the uh, commands uh, that the admin needs to uh, run within the plugin root configuration so as to install all of the dependencies 
that are required to use the chat system with your uh, store now uh, let's come to the uh, quick order settings and uh, under the quick order settings basically the admin uh, can uh, set up the configuration for the quick uh, orders so the very first option that we have is to allow quick order from so basically uh, the admin may set this uh, field as both csv and table quick order table or upload csv as required and uh, if for example the admin configures both csv and table then the customers can upload products through a csv file or directly in the table itself and uh, if it's chosen as a quick order table then the customers can add the products directly to the table itself and lastly if we choose it as upload csv uh, then the products can be uploaded only through the csv file so these are the options for the uh, suppliers there for the customers basically and uh, then we have show blank rows so here the admin can choose it as a yes or a no and uh, basically the admin can uh, basically this will introduce an empty set of fields uh, within the quick order section itself so if you want to set them you can choose yes uh, otherwise you can choose a no for not allowing the uh, empty set of fields within the quick order section then we have number of rows to add and here the admin can define the number of rows that need to be added to the quick order for adding the products itself and similarly we have the default number of rows and the admin can basically define the default number of rows present on the quick order page itself so we want to see the combination field here the admin can choose it as a yes or a no and uh, then we have the search product by so here we have three different options to search the products by sku product name both name and the sku so uh, either the customers can search the products by product name if product name is chosen sq then they can use the sq for uh, searching the products otherwise if we have chosen both name and the sq then they can make use of the name and the sq to search the products within your web store so that was about the uh, quick order then you just need to save that up now let's go to the quick uh, section other that is the uh, quote so basically here the admin can set up a minimum quote quantity uh, for the request for quote so here the admin uh, can enter the minimum quantity for requesting a quote for the customer and thereafter you just need to tap on the save changes button now let's go to the asset visibility so basically here the admin can set up the assets so visibility uh, for showing their email phone number address and the social links so accordingly you can choose a yes or a no and uh, it depends upon your account what different assets uh, visibility or the asset details you want to display whether you want to display the email phone number address or the social links with the suppliers there and lastly we have the advanced tab so uh, here the uh, admin can basically uh, provide dynamic functionality to the WooCommerce B2B marketplace plugin so uh, the basically the admin can configure the endpoint and title for the suppliers so for the endpoint, uh, basically uh, the admin can set up uh, it set up the same. So uh, so basically the endpoints uh, are the extra part present in the URL of any website. For example, we have https uh, colon forward slash forward slash webcool.com forward slash about hyphen is forward slash company hyphen profile. So, uh, which is mainly basically uh, used to display the different contents without the need to navigate to multiple pages. So, uh, for instance, a supplier can have a supplier profile page which displays uh, on the URL as an example. So, we can make that as example.com forward slash server supplier profile. So, we can basically append an endpoint, edit the supplier profile to the URL to show the edit page for the supplier profiles for example example.com forward slash supplier profile forward slash edit supplier profile so according to that you can set up the endpoints for the suppliers then uh, we have uh, the uh, title uh, for uh, uh, what we say as uh, for the suppliers so uh, for this uh, uh, supplier profile we can choose the endpoint as profile and the title as supplier profile for the suppliers collection page we can set the endpoint as the collection and the title would be supplier collection and uh, supplier feedback the endpoint would be feedback so that would be the uh, text at the end of the URL there then we can set up the title 
and similarly we can set up the quick order endpoint as quick order and the title as quick order and request for a quote uh, we can set the endpoint as rfq so that the customers can understand on which actual page they are right now and the title as well so these were the basic uh, configurations uh, that are required for the b2b marketplace uh, for the woocommerce platform so uh, these uh, configurations need to be made initially after you have successfully installed this particular plugin so uh, that was much about the general uh, overview of this particular uh, B2B marketplace for the WooCommerce and the rest of the uh, options that, that are there within the B2B marketplace and we'll be breaking down them within different sections like we'll be showing you RFQ section, the chat, se uh, the chat section, the quick order section and the other options that we have there within the B2B marketplace for WooCommerce and uh, basically we'll be explaining them uh, and uh, we'll also be uh, showing you how and what uh, different uh, things are required for making use of those uh, sections as well so uh, so that was much about the b2b marketplace for woocommerce uh, general overview today and uh, i hope it helped you out and if you have any questions or queries regarding the b2b marketplace for the woocommerce platform then you can always get back to us at support at the rate of webpool.com or you may uh, you may raise a ticket at webpool.uvs.com Thanks for watching this particular video and have a great day ahead.